and the and the department at large. Having said those, all I want to say to all of the members that we are facing a very difficult situation, a situation we have never dealt with before. It will need uh, a lot of South Africans holding hand in hand together and communicating and clarifying confusion amongst one another. And uh, to be as less partisan as possible, we have got no right to deny parties to be partisan. But this needs our relationship to coordinate ourselves more as South Africans than uh, pure ideology. Having said that, I want to move to the next point to Ms. Sabo to check if you can do the roll call. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, members. Um, and department and everyone in the meeting. Yes, Chairperson, we do have a number of members who are in this meeting. I would like to confirm Member Masango, although she's experiencing some technical problems in terms of the camera, she indicated that she won't be able to, to, to see her. And we have Member Abrahams, we have Member Eris, we have Member Mpam Bosipukwana, we have you, Chairperson Member Kungubele, we have Member Circles. I've received apologies from Member Nguenya, Member Van der Merve, and Member uh, who indicated that they will join the meeting um, a few minutes later. And Member Stock is also experiencing some technical challenges. He indicated that he will try to go to a, a venue that will allow him to join the meeting, but he will definitely come to join the meeting. Uh, so I have those um, uh, confirmation. I just want to present to the committee. Chairperson, uh, your support staff, we are all here to support you. Thank you very much. Uh, technically, there is no ANC in the meeting. It's only you, Chair, so far. The quorum? Two, four, six. There are six members. Uh, it's 11. Yeah, so we are a quorum. No. Okay. Uh, well, I'll be members. I think we should proceed. Um, the, can we table the... the Maybe I should. Did I ask if the we, we have got any apologies? No, Chair. Uh, Chairperson, we do have um, an apology of um, Member Stock, who said he will join the meeting a bit later, and Member Van der Merve and Member Anguenya. Those are the three apologies. They will join us a bit later. So does it mean members are still struggling to? Yes. Connect. To connect. In so we have a list of members who are, who are trying to connect. Um, I haven't received any requests from them in terms of um, challenging experiencing the experience. Uh, okay. Is the department here? Yes, Chef. Thank you. The minister? Yes, she's here. I see her on the screen. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we need to proceed and table the agenda. Okay, sure. Uh, honorable members, we are tabling the agenda as circulated. <laughs> we are dealing with the departmental presentation. We are dealing with the regular update of COVID. Yes, minister. What is happening now? Can people mute, please? Can people mute? Yes, I want a peasants. Yes. Uh, I've muted everyone. You can unmute yourself. Chaperson, you can unmute yourself. Thank you. 
Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Person, apology. Apology, Chaperson. You remember, I, you recall, Chaperson, I said from the beginning when we started, we were exposed to things. So the do's and the don'ts are still very important. Let us ask our people to help us with that. We are listening to Inda Bazabantu Zasema Cameroon. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. I think we'll, we'll, get a, we'll find our way as we move on. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, I've just tabled the agenda. The key items is presentation by the department has agreed that uh, there will be an update on COVID at the COVID-19 at the end, as we agreed that, because this is an unusual situation, so we need a regular update on that. There's also an adoption at the end of the report of the annual performance plan and strategy and so on. Can I table the agenda, honorable members? I would like to... Um, uh, Adopt the agenda, Chair. It's Bridget Masango. Thank you, Honorable Masango. Any second, huh? I can second that, Chair Alexandra Abrams. Thank you, Honorable Alexander. There being no counter, we proceed straight to the departmental presentation. Honorable Minister. Um, thank you very much, Chairperson. I, I also do not want to take um, a time on this. I will also speak at the end. So I, I want the department to immediately table uh, the reports without a waste of time. I'll, I'll give to the ADG. Thanks, Lord Minister. Well, Honourable uh, Chairperson, Honourable Minister, Deputy Minister, Honourable Members, thank you very much for the opportunity once again to provide a very brief and concise update on the, the um, response of the Department as it relates to COVID, uh, or the portfolio, the DSD portfolio. Perhaps I would start by indicating that um, the, the 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 social security nets that we provide um, uh, uh, through social protection services um, to vulnerable people and communities um, are, are important uh, and contribute to the well-being, um, of the quality of life, and by default, uh, the economy. Maybe it's also important to highlight that since we had our last discussions, chair, uh, we've uh, continued to place on with uh, work relating to, um, we've continued to press on with work relating to, um, sorry, something's happening. Uh, sorry, this, oh, it's the, it's the pro. Sorry, uh, I'm struggling with the, with the background. And the sound. I'm not sure if you, if members can hear me. We can hear a ADG. Is it possible that the background document can be removed, please? Uh, sorry, it's just a, a, a short distraction. Can I, can I proceed, Chairperson? Please do, please do, ADG. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I was just making a request if the background document could please be removed from the screen. Th thank you very much. Chairperson, as I indicated, uh, this is a very brief update. Um, the update will be in two folds. One as it relates to food and nutrition programs and the other as it relates to special COVID grant or the work that we are doing through through SASA. Um, Chair, we, we, we continue um, to provide uh, food uh, through social uh, relief uh, of distress. And uh, to date, we have distributed 
uh, we have increased our numbers from last week from 525,095 uh, food parcels uh, to just over 670,000 food parcels, feeding approximately 2.7 million uh, people. Um, and um, we we have begun a process of 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 mapping out some of the areas or provinces that have uh, extreme uh, need for food. Um, and uh, we utilized, of course, the data from StatsSA, uh, which basically highlights that uh, areas, and particularly rural areas of the country, um, are, are, the, are the provinces that have uh, major challenges. Uh, and this includes the Northwest, the Northern Cape, Eastern Cape, Bumalanga, um, and we are we are working on expanding the work that we are doing through our CNDC programs, um, and uh, we are meeting on a weekly basis with provinces uh, to get an update in terms of what's happening in the provinces as it relates to food distribution, etc. So, Chair, I just wanted to put that uh, uh, there, but maybe also to highlight that um, we, we 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 have noted. Um, um, uh, we have noted, um, uh, well, firstly, we must appreciate NGO organizations for stepping up to assist uh, with regards to providing food security. Um, um, and uh, we, 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 we noted some of the challenges related to food distribution. Um, and uh, we're working on a coordination mechanism in that regard. Uh, but I think what's important to highlight is that uh, we have never stopped uh, uh, or never is uh, in the directions issued by the Department of Social Development. Uh, we never said that uh, NGOs must stop providing food. Um, uh, we have never we, we've never done that. What we've done is we've encouraged a knock and drop uh, service uh, as we do within the context of our CNDCs. Um, and uh, we 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 we, we uh, our centres were closed during the lockdown. Um, and this was in line with the disaster management regulations issued by COCTA. I think our intention, again, is to highlight that we need to reduce the spread of COVID and to enhance coordination uh, and uh, reduce chaos and congestion, uh, as we've seen in other places like Centurion and so on and so forth. So uh, we also need to be able to account for how many households we are feeding uh, to avoid elements of duplication and to ensure that we have some sense of a database uh, of the people uh, who are vulnerable in our communities. And that's why we encourage NGOs to engage with uh, local municipalities and, and, and provincial departments when doing such. Um, and uh, the other idea that we, we well, the other, what we also want to do is to ensure that we have, uh, that the people who are providing food are providing food that is nutritious, that are provi and providing food that is not uh, expired, but uh, are also mindful of the importance of, of how uh, we ensure uh, that we provide food in a dignified manner. So so, so we want to put that forward um, and, and highlight that. We also want to highlight that at no given point or time have we uh, uh, ever uh, engaged or promoted uh, political party branding food parcels. Uh, we haven't done that. We don't do that. Uh, we provide uh, food parcels within the context of the legislation and uh, within the context of the programs that we that we that we roll out I, I thought i should just highlight some of those elements very quickly chairperson and then highlight two more things um what we're thinking in terms of uh, 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 the lockdown as the lockdown progresses uh, we think that um uh, um uh, we, we, of course what we do is we'll continue providing counseling and providing psychosocial support uh, um, and we are employing an additional 1800 social workers specifically to assist with, with COVID, um, and uh, we, we received, uh, I think members may be aware of the calls by the uh, religious leaders to consider uh, being uh, considered as essential services to assist in the provision of food and indeed spiritual counseling. Um, and these proposals have been considered. Um, I think the other important part is that we, we, have, we continue to provide, we will continue providing shelters for the homeless and we're in discussions with COCTA on how best we can uh, work on this jointly. The challenge you would know is that uh, COCTA's financial year starts in August. And not necessarily plan, and we've issued guidelines amongst ourselves. Is you? Is you? 
Can you please go? Uh, you were not audible. Hello, DJ. 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 We could. DJ. We could. Hi, Linton. They can't hear you. Linton. Linton. We are proposing that. Okay. Yes. Can you please stop for a second? I can see members. I can't hear members. Can't yeah, you. can you stop for a second? I think, chap, through okay, you, Jefferson, okay. I think okay, your Mr. network Mr. is disturbing. You are staggering. People can't hear you. You have to go back um, to the issue of the social workers. Down, you were, you, 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 you completely froze there. Lintin, are, are you there? Lintin. Chairperson, I, I'm here. I'm not sure if members can hear me. Did you hear what the minister was saying? No, I didn't hear. I, I, it, can, it you repeat, me out. can you repeat? Can you repeat, Minister? Uh, Linton, you, I think you must, your guys must check your network. Um, it's going up and down, and you are staggering, and your words are being swallowed. So I'm saying you need to go back to when you were explaining, start from where you. You stop with the social workers and then go from there. Okay, thank you very much, Minister, <laughs> for the guidance. Um, so, <laughs> proceed. The, so, uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. So, just to highlight that, um, what we are, what we are thinking in terms of the continuation of the lockdown is, of course, uh, to continue providing, and we do so providing counselling and psychosocial support. And um, what we've done, Chairperson, is employed an additional 1,800 social workers specifically to assist us uh, with the, the, the current space that we are in with, as it relates to COVID. We also, uh, you, you would be aware, Chairperson, that um, and members would be aware that the religious leaders, leaders have been calling for um, uh, consideration to be made essential services so that they could also assist us in the rollout of provision of food and uh, spiritual counseling. And these the, these pr the proposals have been considered. I think the other important thing to highlight, Chair, is that uh, we, we, we are, we, we are in, in discussions with COCTA around how we could uh, maintain um, the, the sustainability of uh, homeless shelters so that uh, people in the shelters are able to, to have food and able to have um, the necessary services. As you'd be aware, the, the COCTA financial year with municipalities only starts in August as opposed to the other financial years which start in April. So we're in discussions and we've worked on a guideline and uh, a busy processing that and how best we can, we, we can move on that process. I think it's also important to highlight that uh, we are proposing that early childhood development centers and old age homes remain closed to curb the spread of COVID. And then our treatment centers, shelters for the uh, and shelters and child and youth care centers and centers for victims of gender-based violence um, will be open, but under very strict COVID-19 protocols. Uh, with regards to NPOs, we um, we have paused a physical registration, um, but we have uh, uh, members of the public can certainly apply for NGO uh, uh, for NPOs uh, through our website. Now, chair, we've noted some of the challenges around the long queues at Sasa. Um, and uh, we, we are working um, quite steadily, uh, or working hard around getting uh, staff to be able to uh, service um, uh, the, the, the members of the public. Uh, I must highlight that um, uh, we, 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 through the risk adjustment um, uh, strategy, we've begun to bring in a third of the staff at SASA offices. Um, to ensure that we we, we, we provide the serv uh, services to our people. Um, and um, what we've done is, uh, so with the opening of our offices, um, I can tell you now, Chair, that at SASA offices, we have uh, over 20 staff that have already been infected uh, with COVID. And uh, we have, uh, uh, of course, had one fatality. Uh, and uh, what happens is it, it, it necessitates when staff in offices uh, um, contract the virus, it necessitates us to put staff that they've been in contact with in quarantine, uh, and it may affect uh, um, operations at our offices in terms of service delivery. But we're working on a plan to ensure that we're able to direct staff to various offices uh, and, um, and and assist uh, members of the public in this regard. Maybe chair very quickly on the on update with regards to the 350,000, 350 rand grant, 
we have received just over, uh, I think we are bordering on the 5 million applications right now. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm on or on pause here. Yes, yeah. Sorry, I I'm, I'm just want to check with members whether you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Can I proceed, Chair? I'm on the last part that relates please, to... Uh, please do. Please do. Please do. Thank you very much. We received just over five, I think we, we are on five million applications now with a special COVID grant. Um, and um, we, we have started processing around 2.6 million um, um, applicants who have completed their applications. So from the five million, they had various stages. Some have not completed the applications, but we have about 2.6 million who have already uh, completed their applications. Now, I think it's important to to note that through our various platforms, Chair, uh, we have received, um, for example, through the USSD platform, about 2.8 million applications, about 318,000 applications through uh, our website, and, and, and 30,000 applications via our WhatsApp line. Lint and um, we... Lint we, we Lint these, Lint in some cases, include uh, some... Application as it relates to the the, the members who. Oh, Lenton, can you listen? Yes, Chair. Yes. Lenton. Don't you have a Don't you have a written presentation to put on the screen? Sorry, Chairperson. Don't you have a written presentation to put on the screen? We can we can share that, Chef Person. We can share, yeah, may, this, maybe not now on the screen, a whole lot of notes okay. on this, but we can send right, some proceed. information. All right, proceed. Oh. proceed. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, so we, we you'd recall, Chair, that we had uh, a test file, or we, we had, uh, during the trial run a few weeks ago, received over 75,000 applications. Now, from the 75,000 applications, uh, we last week um, uh, verified some of these, well, the whole 75 applications to through SARS. And uh, with, uh, what we realized is that 39,000 of those applications were actually uh, people who uh, had been drawing salaries already. And uh, that uh, would have um, caused us some challenges in that we would have paid people who um, uh, do not necessarily uh, uh, deserve the, the, the grants because uh, they were already drawing salaries. Now, we would have if we had paid all those people at the time, we would have paid about 13.6 million rand uh, and over a six month period, about 81 million rand. So we, 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 are, we are at the moment processing uh, the, 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 the applications as they've come in. Um, and uh, we are returning some information to uh, communicating with the applicants, uh, asking them for, bank, for their bank details so that we are able to make the payments uh, in that regard. I thought, Chair, I would quickly speak to that. Um, um, I'm not sure. I would perhaps ask the CEO if she wants to say a few things regarding the grant uh, in terms of progress that we've made thus far. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, 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 okay. uh, thank you, Chair. I won't take too much time because uh, um, Linton has already uh, covered most of the issues. But just to emphasize that uh, of the, 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 the challenge that makes us the process protracted is the fact that we have to vet the applications through a number of channels before we can actually uh, begin to pay. We did a test last week and paid a few clients. Uh, fortunately, of the 75,000 uh, applications that we sent through to SARS for the last uh, leg of the vetting, because we would have by then vetted people through SOCPEN, through UIF, uh, and, and checked uh, the issue of their IDs. And now we're just waiting for SARS. Of the 75,000, which uh, Linton spoke about, 39,000 were found to be people that actually get, got a salary in April. And 36,000 were uh, uh, further vetted uh, by SARS. And of that 36,000, we found that some of the people had not authorized us to actually vet their information uh, with SARS because they had applied at the time when we were doing the test. And because of that reason, SARS uh, wanted us to 
actually go back to those clients and ask as to whether they are comfortable that we uh, SARS can give us their financial information. So 11,000 actually qualify. We're contacting that 11,000 today so that that 11,000 can get paid this week. Um, and so we are going to, to, to start paying, which we are excited about. But over and above that, we've sent another 300,000 uh, uh, files that we've vetted already on our side to SARS. And the view is for us every two days of the 2.6 million as we clean that data to send at least th- between 300,000 to 500,000 to SARS so that we can pay continuously. And the idea is not to pay once off, is to make sure that each time we've cleared uh, people, we actually do the payment. We're going to use three uh, three methods of payment. The first method being uh, to check uh, if a person is banked, we'll pay the money into a bank account. The second option is once a person has got a SIM card, that is an approved SIM card, will pay into their phone, which therefore means that they can go and, and take the money from from any ATM and they will make the choice whether they are closer to an APSA ATM or an FNB ATM or whatever the ATM is that's closed by them. So that's the second option. The third option is for those people that don't have bank accounts who will actually deposit their money into a post bank, a, a facility whereby they can go to any post office and then they can draw the money. Uh, in the long term, we will look at what it is that we can do with regards to a, 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 a paper vouchers. But again, the challenge we have with regards to that is that We've received over 50,000 uh, proposals uh, whereby uh, they were unsolicited. And the challenge is if we actually uh, choose one or the other without uh, going through a process, we'll actually uh, found, be found wanting. Hence, we've put all of those in one file and we're then going to look at them for the not only for the short term, but for the medium to long term so that we can then decide as to who do we actually uh, allocate uh, the responsibility to do that work for us in the long term? The key is for us to make sure that uh, whoever it is that will decide for in the future that the system is interoperable, but secondly, to make sure that we can ensure that the, 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 the money stays in our communities in instances where, where people actually uh, uh, utilize the money. This in future will not only be uh, in relation to uh, to our the, the 350 only, but the view is to also be able to assist also the other clients that we currently have so that we can ensure that the money gets locked into our communities and that they don't only participate, uh, have to go to towns when they actually have to transact. I thought I should just make those additions in terms of the presentation that's been done by the DG already. Thank you, Chair. Thank thank you, uh, members. And thank you, Minister and Deputy Minister. Uh, Are we done, Minister? Hmm. Chairperson, with regard to the issue of COVID, I think we are are done. Safe to say that I want to make this issue to be very important for me. The mapping out of the hotspots Hmm for me is critical, number one. Number two, the appreciation of the levels, uh, moving from level five to level four to level three, it's about what I'm saying to the department is that all the regulations as they are passed, they have an impact on us as social development. And therefore we do not need to wait for until things are finalized, we are participating at the level of the net joints and participating at the level of the NCCC. But my my request to the department was that we need to do the mapping out. We need to then say where is uh, where are the hunger pangs exactly the high, um, where is the money? Because we're talking about the fact that the money that we had has run out already. And the money that SASA had as they are 2020, 2021 is the 400 million. That money is now in that set for the 350. So where is where are we going to get the money? Our conversation with the, um, the Solidarity Fund, the Solidarity Fund gave us very little money in comparison to others. I mean, 2 billion went to health. And I do appreciate 
uh, health does need that amount of money. But we need to look at where else are we going to be able to get the money. And therefore, one of the things that we need to do is to have a conversation about the reviewing, reviewing our plans, reviewing our budget, waiting for the review that has to be done, of, obviously, by the Minister um, of Finance. And, and also, the, the one that is a big problem for me is about the food and the distribution of the food. And I think uh, the ADG has already dealt with the fact that we will never stop anybody from distributing food, whatever the case might be. And I, I, I actually was taking a bit of an exception when uh, the whole information about us stopping people from distributing food is all over the show. Even in the media this morning, it was still being repeated that we are stopping people. We cannot stop people from distributing food. However, our people are not guinea pigs. Personally, I will not agree to a situation where food that is being distributed have not been looked into by anybody. Uh, there's no plan for the distribution of that food. There's no spread of the distribution of food across the country. But also there's no developmental approach. There's no sustainable approach towards it. What, why we are getting into the space is to just say, as they distribute the food, they must take into consideration all the health issues, all the, 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 the COVID protocols. That's all we are asking for. We cannot stop people because it's, it's painful to see that people are, are still hungry. And then uh, the other thing that I'm saying to the department chair is we are more than just a department of distribution of money, which is the 350, and the distribution of the of the of the food parcels. We are about a whole range of other services. And I'm saying to the department, we cannot lose sight of the bigger picture of who we are. And we must not be dragged into arguments of food parcels and other things and forget about the fact that we have old age homes. We've got uh, centers uh, for drug rehabilitation. We've got um, orphanages. We've got all those things. What I'm saying as a, as, as, a, as a person who's supposed to direct is to say, I don't want us to lose sight of the bigger picture of our services as social development. Thank you, Chair. Members, can you comment, seek clarity? so that we wrap up this item, honorable members. Uh, Lindy, do you have the list of the people who want to speak? Uh, Chairperson, uh, the, I don't have any indications uh, from members on the, on the meeting chat. Let, let, uh, it means we'll go straight to the foster care presentation. All, all I wanted to say, even before we go there, is that uh, as we are trying, Minister, to have this meeting with some few, some NGOs, which have got national stature next week, it will be useful when they are here to demonstrate that there has been efforts to ensure, can you, this presentation is, okay, can you help us when we meet next week to demonstrate that from now until next week, there's the attempts to work together in a coherent and uh, probably aligning with the same standards. That attempt is actually gaining success. Because at the end of the day, whether there's corona or no corona, there are always health standards that government is responsible for. Can we go on with the first again? I, I will just speak to a few elements regarding the presentation related to FAST um, and uh, then uh, ask my colleague, uh, Ms. Connie Ngumalo, to then take us through the latter part of, of, of the presentation. Chairperson, I think uh, as you're aware, by way of context, um, the North Gauteng High Court um, 
issued an order that uh, we should um, work on a comprehensive legal solution towards addressing issues relating to foster care. Um, we were then also advised by the court to provide uh, reports and perhaps to respond to um, uh, one or two inquiries regarding this. We were supposed to provide reports to the court every three months uh, after the uh, order was issued for an extension last year, November. Chairperson. Uh, sorry, sorry about this. I understand after I have allowed you to present that there are members who want to speak on that presentation. I will request them to, to when they comment on this item that you are presenting to, 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 to raise their issues on COVID. Is that okay? Then you can proceed. That's perfect. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Chairperson. So we were, we were highlighting that, of course, by way of context, Members would recall the High Court issued an order that we come up with a comprehensive legal solution and there was an extension granted on that last year, November. We were then advised, uh, uh, ordered by the court to ensure that we provide a report uh, every three months to the court. We provided the report in February for the first three months and uh, we are finalizing the second report, which will be processed in May as well. Um, we process this, of course, state attorney, which is the accepted process uh, in, in in government. Uh, and um, we, we, we have learned that uh, perhaps that report didn't uh, reach the court, and I think we've made a follow-up on that. But our records show that indeed we process uh, the, the report accordingly to, uh, through the state attorney and uh, to the court on the 5th of February uh, this year. Uh, perhaps to also highlight, Chair, that um, we are finalizing the second report which will post now in May, um, in line with uh, meeting the uh, court order. Um, Chairperson, part of what we were supposed to have done uh, is to provide progress on the Children's Amendment Bill. And uh, we um, have been ready to process the bill. Of course, with the advent of COVID, um, we've had to um, uh, wait for uh, the meetings, the necessary meetings, which access or, or, or approve or process these documents to take place. Uh, and I can inform the committee that the Children's Amendment Bill will be serving in the in the next few days uh, for, 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 for consideration. I must also highlight, Chairperson, that there is an intrinsic link between the Social Assistance Bill, uh, Amendment Bill, that we have, we have processed in Parliament already. And I think the Portfolio Committee has looked at the bill um, and uh, is now headed to the uh, National Council of Provinces. Um, and the comprehensive legal solution that we want to provide, uh, the elements embedded within that bill that have to be processed in order for us to uh, reach the, um, the intended outcome that we, that we want to make as it relates to um, the com comprehensive legal solution. The Chair, we're in constant discussions with provinces around how we can close uh, the backlog uh, of the of the foster care um, so that uh, we, we, this is how we, of course, update our reports. But I thought I'd just provide that update, Chair, and then allow my colleague, uh, DDG Nelly um, Koning Malo, to uh, do some elements of the presentation. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Koning? Um. Good day, uh, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members, Minister and colleagues. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I yes can. can. Yes, we can. And can you see? Can you see the presentation on the screen? Yes, we no. can. No. Yes, we can. No. no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank no, you. Can't. Um, you can't. <laughs> I can't. DM, no. <laughs> I can't, you can't see. Okay, oh, DM, it's proceed. fine. I will speak. Please, please proceed, DJ. Yes. Um, Honorable Chair and members, I will be speaking to the progress. Uh, I'm trying to move now the slides. Yes. I won't go through all the slides. There are certain slides that are very key to present the progress that I want to speak to. Let's go to slide four um, as a way of introduction. 
As we all know, I want to highlight the progress um, that we have registered uh, in light of the countrywide lockdown and the, and the COVID-19 pandemic. The, um, I just want to remind the honorable members that uh, the last time we appeared in the committee was in March, uh, where we registered some progress. Uh, we had a baseline of 102.785, which is in slide six, which I will go to after this slide, so that you, you have a collection of, say, where were we in March and where are we supposed to be now in May, uh, if it was not for lockdown. But then in slide seven, I also continue to show the current baseline. Baseline basically means the number of court orders that needs to be extended, that are still uh, 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 seeking for social workers' attentions and courts. So you'll see already in May, we've got 166, it's a big jump, 166, 130. Uh, although there's some few progress that has been made, which I will talk to also in slide seven. Um, the increase in the baseline, that jump, will is we attributing it when we analyze the statistics to those court orders that were extended for a short period of time by the courts uh, using section 159, where you can go to court and say, I want to extend this. And this happened a lot in the Eastern Cape towards the end of November last year, before just before the extension was granted. So there's quite a number of them that were like three to six months to say, yes, as a magistrate, I'm extending this court order, but please bring either an unabridged birth certificate or a report or something else that requires to make sure that the magistrate finally grant a court order that is going to go for two years because these orders are extended every two years. And the provincial status also in the planned interventions are discussed in the narrative report that we also send later to the members so that we don't have many uh, slides. Um, I will start before I go to the tables that I referred to, which is slide six and seven. I just want to indicate that the numbers themselves, honorable chair and members, they mean nothing at this stage if the comprehensive legal solution is not attended to and finalized. So the, kept, the, the children's amendment bill with all those challenges that we had, we finally prepared a cap memo that we were hoping that we will present by the 31st of March. However, on the 29th, sorry, however, it did not take place due to lockdown. But still after that, a uh, minister pushed that it be submitted to a uh, cabinet uh, so that they, it can be considered during lockdown. So we're waiting for a date. We're hoping that during this May, they will call us to present so that we can retable it again to the, uh, um, um, to the speaker. And the last bullet speaks to the social assistance amendment bill that the committee has attended to and uh, has been referred to the ncop for processing because also is the second part of the legal uh, comprehensive legal solution to ensure that um, there's a, an um, extended child support grant that will relieve the pressure of the foster care more especially for those children that are staying with relatives now, this is the slide I was talking to, slide six. This slide six, it's, it's, it's more historical. We presented it in March. I just wanted to show members that we were coming from this. So the total outstanding that we had that time was 81,533. There in D, where I've got footnotes, because for us to get that total, you add your deviation and your projection and then you get the total uh, 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 number so as we move forward to the slide seven because this is a critical one for today's meeting ideally we were supposed to carry that number of 81 uh, something to uh, this baseline but because of the reasons that i've explained you will see the baseline up to april it's already 
84,007. And there's minimal progress in that, which is 36,667, which is not only for one month. It's a progress that we have registered and added the progress we have presented in March, just to get a picture as to where are we. So we have moved a little bit, but then when you also look at the projected baseline uh, up to the end of the court order, because this court order, it's going to end in November 2020. By November 2020, we shouldn't be talking about court or court orders that needs to be extended. All these court orders should have been should be extended by that time. So uh, we're talking about 82, 1, 2, 3 also, but we have to add the two numbers because of the cycle nature of this foster care on daily basis if we want to be uh, dramatic we are uh, saying we have an order that needs to be extended it has completed its lifespan of two years so that is why um, uh, 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 we will keep on having more numbers because cases as they lapse they add to the backlog on daily basis so currently uh, I want to correct also that the last figure, the way we said overall outstanding. If you add Eastern Cape, for instance, that's the only uh, um, additional glitch that I had. If you add um, the, the, the deviation and the projected baseline, it gives you um, uh, that number less five. So meaning it's four, three, six, six, two not 43667 and that has got an effect on the balance the balance down there of 129141 it should be 129136 so basically as we sit today we have a backlog of 129136 subtracting the five that i was talking to to the eastern cape where there was an additional error so that's where we are, uh, Chairperson, in terms of figures. Now I will go to the this analysis is the analysis I was talking to. So the bullet three will change to one two nine and one three six. So that's the analysis I was talking to. Now when we come to these are some of the interventions that we did, realizing that there's lockdown. Firstly. We also communicated to Center for Child Law because we said we should not keep quiet because two months, it's too much. Because remember when we presented in March, there were monthly projections in terms of how the provinces are going to deal with the backlog. So now we communicated to them to say we foresee a problem for the April and also part of March and also May, social workers won't be moving um, with the speed that we want them to move because there were various challenges. I must say, Chairperson, we are aware that social work or social welfare services are an essential service. But the reality of the matter was that there were no, the PPEs could not be uh, procured on time. The delivery took more time. So social workers, could not even do a home visit or even approach court for some of these cases. So where you see programs uh, progress registered, it's where it's administrative extension and also where magistrate were implementing section 159 still, so that we even have some uh, progress that has been um, registered. Now, when I go to the common challenges that the provinces are experiencing, we have discovered as we interact with provinces that they basically there were also court orders that were not submitted to SASA for capturing uh, because SASA was closed during the lockdown until recently. So they were sitting with some of these court orders that were done in March, just before the lockdown that could not be captured so that the baseline can be reduced. Then also the issue of PPEs that I spoken to it was a challenge to do home visits, uh, but also the issue of whether we can take parents and children to court. We have engaged with justice also to say, can they allow social workers to just present the reports without really taking the caregiver and the children themselves 
to present themselves to court. So the justice is saying they are still consulting with their uh, magistrate commissions. Then they will come back to us because that will also speed up the the appearance of social workers in the in the children's courts. Also, there were courts that were not really implementing 159. Uh, you will note, Chairperson and Honorable Members, that even in March, we did indicate that not all magistrates are willing to use 159. And 159, basically, it's a short-term extension that says, I can, as a magistrate, extend this court order uh, uh, until you bring certain documentation that is missing so that I can give the two-year uh, uh, order. But also there was a challenge to say during the lockdown, schools were shut down and then social workers were also saying, with us, we wanted to work with our magistrates where we had PPEs, but we didn't even have the school uh, forms that are required. And those particular magistrates could not uh, entertain section 159 because if you implement 159 you can simply say okay I can extend this order until you get a school form when the schools are open and then also uh, the challenge of um, unabridged certificates the directions for home affairs were very clear uh, during lockdown that they are not issuing any other documentation except for the newborns and also replacement of certificates. Um, uh, during the, but now in level four, uh, it has been eased out, so um, those documents can be uh, uh, applied. Now, some of the proposals I've already spoken to, but what I want to stress is what the acting DG has also spoken to, to say we did appoint, uh, we are finalizing the appointment of 1809 social workers, and we believe if these social workers are deployed solely for COVID-19, it will also relieve social workers to attend to foster care and other child protection uh, 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 interventions because we are using the very same social workers to intervene for COVID-19. So this 1809, they will come in handy so that we can really uh, speed up and focus on the um, attention of other uh, services. But we also requested provinces to submit catch-up plans with uh, breakdowns per month to say, now that we have lost two and a half months, how are we going to make sure that we catch up on the numbers? Because that 129,136 is a big number that needs to be resolved by November 2020 when the uh, court order expires. But key to this chairperson and members is the finalization of the comprehensive legal solution both the Social Assistant Act and also the Children's Amendment Act. I thank you, Chairperson and members. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Minister, is there any addition of DG? Uh, ch chairperson, maybe before, uh, before we, we, we get the minister in, I'd like to check if Brenda uh, Sibeko uh, could make uh, just one quick comment. Brenda, I'm not sure if you're in the meeting. I think she is. Uh, yes, I am in the meeting, DG. Thank you, DG, Chairperson, members, and Minister DM. Not really, other than to say the funding for this will be made available once the, once the bill is you, passed. Where are you, Where are you? I mean, oh, okay. I'm in my office. <laughs> I'm in That's the office, good. Chairperson. I, I just switched on the camera now. Are you able to see me? <laughs> Okay, all right, proceed. So, yeah, always I forget about the camera. Um, yes, Chairperson, I don't have much to add other than to say that the funding for this, uh, for this, um, the, the extension, the, the top up of the child support grant will be made available by Treasury once the bill has been passed. So, as soon as we have that, they will be able to implement then the, the top up grant to support the comprehensive legal solution. That's it from my side. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Uh, we now honorable members presentation has been done on the foster care. Uh, my one question, honorable minister is and DG, has there been any national effort from the department level to discuss with the magistrate or maybe with the chief justice 
just to present the dire nature of the situation so as to under these circumstances they can cooperate uh, relaxing and adjusting the ways their ways of working and doing this extension that's my general question honorable members uh, honor, uh Ms. Tabo, do you have names uh thank you very much chairperson yes i do have the same names uh member masango uh member sukars member eris uh member nguenya uh let me check again yes chair that's that's all the members they they who indicated their interest to to ask questions so far uh i see something on the board i don't know what this thing is Thank you. Uh, honorable members, I, I just want to repeat, when members comment on this foster care presentation, if you had issues you wanted to raise during the COVID briefing, you must put them here because once we're done with this item, we're done with COVID and everything. Honorable Masango. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much for the presentations that have been made um, and the update on the on the COVID uh, um, work that the department has done. My questions on the COVID are the numbers that have been given by the ADG of the food, the, the parcels that have been uh, uh, distributed and the numbers of people that have received the food. I just would like to know if that number includes the number that I believe was, was uh, given by the Solidarity Fund in terms of 300,000 people that have been, uh, or, or food parcels that have been distributed. Does, does our number, the department's number, include that number at all or not? Which then will, will say how much uh, e e e food has gone out there. And the second question also in that, whilst one appreciates the numbers of the food parcels that have been distributed, do we by any chance, even if it's an estimate, know how much the need is out there for us to, to know how much ground we, we are covering or have covered in terms of delivering or in terms of meeting the, the need uh, that is out there in, the, in, the, in, the, in communities? And also about the, the, the ATG also spoke about the SASA offices having been opened at one third, which was already uh, uh, presented to us. And we appreciated the fact that the offices were opened. But one keeps getting a sense from the inquiries that one receives from, for example, the uh, Houteng, where um, Bronco Spread offices not being open, uh, Somerset West in the Western Cape not being open. Is there a number of, of, of offices that could not open uh, for any number of reasons uh, ranging from PPE or whatever it is that was preventing these offices not to be open when all the offices were opened at the beginning of, uh, 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 of, of last week as it were. And I would like to know now from the, 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 the information on the, on the um, foster care I seem to have received a letter yesterday, and I believe all the members received it, uh, that said that the department uh, or the court and the Center for Child Law have not received the report of February. And, um, and, and one would want to know why that is the case, because the lockdown obviously started after after uh, February when the first, I believe, report was due. And, and also one, one then understands the May one because we, we now having a lockdown in the department, uh, it, uh, you know, drawn into, into uh, meeting other, other responsibilities during this period. And so the, the, the voucher story also, I would like to know if it's possible to just give a communication, even if it's sent to us uh, via email, that explains the, the voucher versus the, the uh, SRD that people are still applying to the department through uh, uh, SASA, uh, because there seems to be a huge confusion. Uh, some people saying, some offices, in fact, of the department 
saying or of Sasa saying that the 350 rand uh, SRD grant is replacing the the uh, 1,200 rand worth of food parcels that Sasa was was providing, and I could it, it, the, the confusion could be mine, but uh, I, I'm, I see it seeping through the communication that one is getting in terms of of people asking questions about this situation. And also the minister talked about the hot hotspots going forward. And I, I really uh, appreciate that and, and, and support that. And would like to know some time ago, uh, there was a State South Africa uh, index that was issued of, of uh, I think, four districts. Does that still work or would that, would the, would the, yeah. would have been shifting your of, time, your time, your of, time um, of, of, of the you know areas that are actually affected by poverty. Thank you, Chair. I'll I'll send other questions for 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 written reply. Thank you so much. Honourable Secretary, it is stop sharing. Honourable Secretary. Honorable Seger, Akbare Seger, can we go to Honorable Aris? Yeah, um, good morning, Chair, and thank you very much, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, thank you, Chair. Chair, mine is just on the presentation of um, the High Court since we have all these challenges with this with the courts what alternative measures are there in place that children receive some sort of assistance if they miss the deadline for this court application and then on um sasa i believe that um, in easter Repair, in easter river offices are closed due to the fact that some of the sasa officials is tested positive chair in kayalicha our people are literally outside the offices and the residents even in that area start even soup kitchens you know to assist our people that sleep outside these offices i just want come. to know how will the department address the problem as our people's lives are at risk by sleeping outside of 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 these offices okay and, but then, I in terms of the, and then in terms of the 350 yeah. application um when okay. this uh, WhatsApp and SMS line was opened, uh, the applicants didn't receive any form of acknowledgement of the application. However, they also didn't receive that 350 rand um, grant. <clears throat> I want to know, must that applicant reapply for that 350 uh, social relief grant? Or what will will this issue be then in terms? Um, right now, Sasa don't process any disability uh, grants. I want to know how will the department assist these people apart from the 350 rand social relief grant that they are entitled to. And then, if you can just uh, maybe I have missed that one. If you can just uh, 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 tell us that. On the 15th, there was payment, uh, I believe, payout of this 350 rand grant. If we can just get an indication how many people did receive this grant and how will, will this grant be paid once a month or how will they ensure? Because as we have already given indication that first 5 million people have applied for this grant, how will the payment of this grant be? Will it be constantly on a weekly basis or will it just be all this payment is being done once a month. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, uh, Honorable Aris. All is good on time. Uh, Honorable Nguenya, Mklage. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson Molloyen. Um, thank you very much for, for the presentations. Um, mine Basically now is on COVID-19 because Honorable Masango covered me on, on the foster care issues. I just need to find out um, in terms of uh, the 350 grant, I heard uh, 
CEO saying that uh, those who do not have bank uh, accounts will be receiving their money from post offices. I don't know if I heard correctly because initially it was said that they will be able to get from any uh, of the South African banks. So if that could be clarified for me, please. And I needed to find out as well that with, with, with the SASA offices being reopened, uh, the people of who, who get the disability grants and those who require a medical reassessment for their for their grants to be renewed. What is the process? Because they are <coughs> attend away from the offices, from the SASA offices to say that they will be automatically uh, uh, re, re, reapplied for and they will continue to get their grant. But now my question is, how will they know that they do not have to come into the offices for the medical assessment. Is there any form of of communication in that in that matter? Again, on the special COVID grant, the 350 grant. If there are unemployed uh, members in one household, let's say five members in one household, they are. What 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 is the process? Are they all going to get the 350 rand? because there are some people who have come uh, to us to say that there's four or five of us in a household, we are unemployed, and we are told we cannot all get the grant. So what, what is the standing point? Do they not all get the grant because they all qualify? They are over 18, they are unemployed, they do not get any kind of grant or income. Do, that not, do they not qualify to get this 350 in, 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 in disregarding the fact that some members of the family have already received uh, this grant? Uh, now, my other question, but I think uh, uh, Honorable Aris has asked me, has asked the question on the set date of paying uh, for the, the, the COVID-19 the COVID, uh, 350 grant, because I see people are getting confirmations on different times, they, 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 they are being confirmed on different times, does that mean that people will be paid throughout? And now my, my question is, if you applied and you only grant the, uh, your application has only been uh, approved, uh, say in, in, in end of or beginning of June, will you forfeit the, the other money from the other month because so you will be not getting paid for the month of, of May because you were only approved in June, despite the fact that you applied immediately when you were told to apply. So basically those are my questions, Chairperson. Uh, if there's anything else, I will I will send in writing. And Goska, cool. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Nguyenia. Uh, uh, Ms. Tabo, are there any other names? Yes, Chairperson, there um, are two, uh, uh, afternoon. Uh, yes, Chairperson, there are two names. Uh, a mistakenly omitted uh, member Abrams from the initial list. She's uh, want to speak and member Stock uh, also wanted to speak. I don't know whether member Sukar had managed to speak previously. Thank you, Chair. She has not. Uh, Honorable uh, Abrams. Thank, thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chairperson, firstly, uh, my condolences to the Sasa family on the passing of one of their colleagues. Um, then also diving into the questions. Um, they say that the ECD centres will be closed, will remain closed. However, um, Minister of Basic Education came out to say that they are busy with a phasing in plan um, for ECDs. Um, so I'd like to know when can we expect... Um, a copy or some information on this phasing in plan. Then also I'd like to go to the issue of the food um, distribution. And if it's for coordinate, coordination purposes, I'd like to make a comment that if donors are donating in their private capacity, if I'm donating in my private capacity to feed an area, this doesn't dissolve government from their responsibility to go back to that same community and make sure that they get their food parcels as well. And on the issue, and you spoke about it earlier, Chair, that we are inviting, want to invite NGOs into this consultation process. And I'd like to know then, when will the draft directives? Honorable Abrams, be... Honorable Abrams, 
Yes. Please, can you go back where you say something doesn't resolve government from going back? So, so I you understand that. So if myself as a donor or as a person in their private capacity is feeding an informal settlement or a community daily out of my own pocket, it doesn't dissolve government from coming back to that same community to make sure that they get the government interventions as well. So, yes, so that's, that's the point. I I want to make. And then also, I when will the draft you. directives be made available for comment, for in in input? Because the fact of the matter is it still doesn't speak to the red tape that it creates um, in permitting NGOs and people like myself and private people from, you know, donating food. Then on the issue of the foster care, and then lastly on the issue of COVID, can we also maybe include a GBV slide in our in our committee meetings? Just a, a one slide presentation on the call volumes um, and and experiences with our command center there. And then on the issue of foster care. So where's my note? So we, we're speaking about um, the, the, the 1,809 social workers that are going to relieve some pressure from our current social workers. But Chair, I'd like to know how feasible is, is this process going to happen and what are the provinces buy-in for the absorption of these social workers? Because have provinces made um, a, um, provision for extra PPE for them? Have they been made provision for tools of trade? I mean, they need to be screened. They need to be vetted. They need to have their access cards. Are they going to be GG vehicles for them? Because we're bringing in all these social workers, yet at the same time, the social workers that are in the offices, we're only accommodating a third of the current workforce. And then with that, I mean, are there provisions for social work managers, social work supervisors, because they're coming on, come in, they're going to spend one month getting all of this um, sorted out, putting them on payroll. The impact that the social work graduates are going to make in three months, there's not going to be much impact. So I'd just like to know what are the province's feasibility in accommodating these graduates in their structures. And then lastly, on the issue of foster care, um, there's supposed to be a foster care monitoring tool that was developed by the end of March and that's supposed to have been implemented by um, provinces to detect the early warning of the foster care um, cases that are, are, got a, that are currently lapsing. And I just want to know that maybe for our next presentation on foster care, can we get a demonstration on how this foster care monitoring tool works online, maybe some screenshots, and also to hear back from the provinces, is this tool, this foster care monitoring tool that's supposed to be implemented implemented in the provinces, is it in fact working? Um, that is all from me, Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Honorable Abrams, don't run away. Mm. Don't, run, don't run away. I just want you to assist my possible ridiculous understanding of what yeah. you said. Are you suggesting that if on a particular day, lunchtime, Solidarity has given food to people of Olive and Ospos, the department must also go and give food for that lunch? Can you clarify exactly what I'm talking about? So, so I'm I'm saying I'm saying if I'm working in a community, and I'll use the use the argument of Bontiaval, for example. So in the community of Bontjeville, they've set up feeding screens. So the residents themselves are feeding each other, but they haven't gotten any support from government. They've relied strictly on themselves and on a private donor here and there to come and give them some um, ingredients for their food. So are you then telling what what I'm then asking is, is government then telling me that they are not going to go to Bontjeville because the community is feeding themselves there? Because in my opinion, that is incorrect. I mean, government is responsible for all the people, whether they are feeding themselves as a community out of their own pockets, they still are entitled to some government intervention in terms of food relief. That's where the partnership comes in. They so, aren't completely absolved because they are they're capable of feeding themselves out of their own pockets. 
That's no, my question. No, thanks. Thanks, Honorable Abrams. I think the department will respond. Let me explain what I'm trying to say so that anyone who comes is that Solidarity Fund is a donation fund. It's no different from the donations that are done by the community somewhere. That's why when we deal with this question, uh, I'll be happy at the end of this meeting we've got a common understanding. That, mm -hmm. for instance, if in Street Abrams, Street in Kailicha, there's a, there's a donor that is giving food every day there. In the situation of the scarce resources we have in South Africa, are we saying even if the department knows that that is happening, they must go and give food there. Maybe we need to talk about coordination, but we'll have to find one another on this matter. Uh, honorable, it's honorable what? Who follows Honorable Seikert? Yes, uh, Chair. Um, can everybody hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, Chair, um, thank you for that point, because that is exactly where I'm going to start with the issues around COVID-19. And it is around the coordination part. Um, the department, um, I, I, I'm requesting this. If we cannot get a coordination strategy so that the double dipping, because one of the issues are double dipping, um, we have very limited resources in areas. And what um, we need from the department is that there be greater coordination, one, in order for um, the department to assist um, um, food distributors to um, give them the information who is actually who has actually received food, I'll get uh, I'll give uh, uh, the committee an example. We have uh, provided a list to the department. Um, I think of over 300 people. Um, this was done three weeks ago. In the meantime. Um, those people are only, I think it is three, um, almost a month ago, and those people are only being issued food um, this Saturday. I have to, however, um, amplify this. It is through the hard work of the SASA officers as well. They did that, especially uh, coming in to um, capture applications um, in the Belleville office. So I'm, when I say a month, it is not to... to, to um, um, show that, you know, it is, it's is—it's taking long. I'm very aware of the burden. Um, I'm just giving an indication of timeline. In the meantime, in that month, we needed to provide food um, and work through the applications of who is the most needy, who's not receiving grants. And in many cases, we could not ascertain that. So we, we needed to go and give food to people, and we do know that those people receiving that food parcel that can last them three weeks are possibly also getting from other donors. There is a huge need for the department to really uh, provide strategic direction, district by district, in the way it comes to food distribution. And it is very important for us because when we look at the numbers, Chair, we can clearly see that as the months progress, we're going to have a bigger burden in the area of cycle support and food insecurity. And we need the department to lead from the front, together with the Department of Health, to work out strategies that we can combine all our efforts together. It is very important because we have the issue of double dipping. We have the issue of community um, um, organizations going out and distributing food out of good intentions, but they are not empowered because they don't have PPEs, they don't get the necessary training, and because of that, the the virus, um, the spread of the virus can escalate. Now, the food that they provide here is essential, it is critical. The areas that I'm talking about are areas in our hotspots here in the metro. Without those people providing food, we are, go we are faced with people being without food for days and even weeks. So we need the department to do that. And, we, and I must commend the department. I must commend the officials. We, we do a great job of telling uh, the department what they're not doing. But we need to also say 
that there are men and women that are answering calls after hours, Chair. They uh, respond to emails after hours. I've personally done this over weekends on a Sunday, on a Saturday, and these men and women, they respond. And Mr. Mchunu is one of, the, uh, one of those people. So I want to thank them for that. But I want to ask the department to give us an indication if there is a long-term strategy because the landscape is changing very fast and in the next couple of months even more so. Is there a long-term strategy that are being worked on that it, that so that we be able to, to, to downscale? Um, and if I say downscale, I'm not talking about capacity. I'm talking about strategic development that will actually enhance all of our hands together so that we can deal with this. Then I want to just bring to the department's attention as well that we do have areas of social workers, uh, specifically in the Halderberg area, I will highlight that, where social workers are not staying. People's um, um, foster care applications are now three years. The people has not received foster care. They're not on the row because um, we've had a, a, a missing social worker there. So that those areas need to be um, addressed where where we don't have um, people that, that can assist. Chair, I think I will stop at that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Honorable Sega, Honorable Stork. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. I think I need to start by uh, extending an apology to uh, to yourself as the chair and the collective leadership of the portfolio committee. Uh, I experienced some technical glitches in the morning, so I had to travel for like an hour for me to get a stable network. Uh, but I'm not complaining, it comes with the responsibility. So I just thought I must be able to clarify that as a point of departure. Uh, and then, Chair, my contribution is actually on the, uh, I mean, as it relates to the foster care issues, uh, I'm, I'm quite covered by the colleagues. And then on the issue of the COVID-19 issues, uh, some of the issues that we picked up uh, from our different constituencies, uh, Comrade, uh, I mean, Honorable Supers, for an example, have quite elaborate and extensively uh, covered me on those issues. Uh, I also wanted just to add my voice on the issue of coordination uh, from the department uh, so that it makes our work very much easy at, uh, at where we are in terms of the ground, in terms of distribution of these food parcels. And then also to ensure that there's a standard that will be set by the department in terms of uh, ensuring that the food parcels that will be distributed to the communities out there, uh, we understand that it's through goodwill and good intentions uh, to ensure that our people, they get some food during this uh, lockdown uh, intervention from government. But those food parcels, they must not be distributed in a manner which is quite demeaning to the community. Uh, we must still be able to respect and protect the rights, the human rights of the individuals or communities that the food parcels have been distributed to. So by so saying, I'm actually proposing to the department that the issue of coordination, like other honorable members have indicated, is quite important. Uh, and then we need to uh, actually activate it. Uh, and then also the issue of, uh, uh, I think uh, one of the honorable members spoke about it, the data that will have to be collected. The issue of double dipping is also a problem to all of us. And, uh, and then once the department can be able to coordinate this, uh, at, the, at the national level, we'll be able to deal with some of the challenges that we are experiencing throughout our different constituencies. And then the last issue I want to speak to is the issue of the 350 grant, uh, the SRD intervention uh, by the department. I know that, uh, I mean, there could be a lot of applications already uh, that have been made through the system, whether it's through email or whether it's through WhatsApp and USD, USSD. Uh, but I think uh, the department must be able to be in a position at least to say to us now as a portfolio committee that for the first phase of the applications uh, this is where we are these are the applications that were made and then uh, and also in terms of payment where where do we stand and then how soon can we expect those payments to be done because some of those questions are being redirected to us and we must be able to be in a position uh, to provide clarity in that regard uh, I think those are my issues, con uh, my contributions, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Rungu Bell. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Stork.
Ms. Nsabo, we are done. Am I correct on speaking? Yes, Chairperson, I don't have any additional um, members who indicated to, to speak. Thank you. Uh, I was advised to welcome uh, Honorable Can Member I be... and Honorable Member Mtaung. Uh, do I hear somebody trying to say something? Can I be recognized, Chair? Who is that? Bilangolo. Go, go in. Uh, in chair. All right, speak, speak, uh, speak, uh, speak, Honorable Bilangur. Uh, no, thank you very honorable. much, Chairperson. Yeah. Uh, firstly, I would like to, to apologize. I was having a problem in connecting. But uh, uh, I didn't get the presentation. Uh, but the questions that I want to raise, Chair, it's concerning the food parcels. I heard that even other members have, have raised some of the issues concerning that. But the issue is, uh, I know that social development has got the standards that they have set uh, to say this, this is the package that people are, this is the package or the food parcel that we need to, to, to give to our, our people that has been identified. But my issue, Chair, is it's like social development, it's, it's, uh, Right. disappeared again. This is a very, I think it must be frustrating to her. Okay. Are you still there, Honorable Bilangul? Honorable yeah. Bilangul? Yes. No, I, 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 I was saying, Chairperson that it's like social development is not differentiating between the families in the rural areas and the families at the locations. Because the food parcels or the food packages that we receive are the same. But uh, I would suggest, I don't know, I, I know that it, can, it won't be simple for the department maybe to meet all those uh, families, to give them the, the required stuff like Let's say, for instance, a, a, a family has been identified and that family is saving more than five or six members. But you find that the package that is being distributed has got um, 10 or 5 kg of millimeter. You find two, two or four cans of fish. And to me, the millimil, the 5 kg or the 10 kg of millimeter. Uh, those people cannot uh, cook for two days. Why can't we come up with something? I know that it will be difficult because uh, social development is looking to the entire uh, country. But can't we come up with a way to identify those? Things? It, this thing mustn't be the way of just giving. But let's just give and have an impact of giving a social development. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Bilangolo. Uh, are we done, Ms. Tabo? Uh, yes, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Okay, wow. Honorable Mangani. Oh, th uh, thank, you, thank you very much, Chair. I'm sorry to be connected. As you know, I'm a rural girl. Eh? I'm staying in the rural, so it's difficult uh, for the network. I wanted to commend the department. Uh, after what Kony have said, uh, as I joined late, I uh, before I come to the meeting, because I want to say something that is tangible that I have seen, I was traveling my province checking what we, what the minister and the staff are telling us is the truth. So I've checked and this food parcels, I just want to commend the, the uh, social develop, development by the food parcel. Because I checked the food parcel that I brought by other organization, uh, we see them because they are visible, they go 
everybody is going there with in these hours of the social development is that they have got a list that say Jane Mangani have registered is this one and this one. If I agree with Honorable Masango for the coordination, if it was going to happen, the coordination that says everybody who wanted to donate, maybe doing it by a district or province, who want to donate, uh, if he's from Northwest, donate into this. This is the office of the social development, or this is our list as the social development for the people who are in dire need. So that uh, this, we must synchronize this thing because everybody is giving, a double dipping is happening. So I just, uh, I want to comment them on that. The other one I will comment when we talk about foster care. Thank you, Chair. We, we have spoken about foster care. Oh, it's because I was lost. Okay. Uh, 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 as I have already alluded, uh, Chair, I'm sorry. I I also look into this issue because sometimes when we are speaking on this visual, sometimes you don't understand. I visited all this uh, uh, municipality, most of them in my province, especially Sasa and social development, as we call it. I went and checked what was the hiccup, especially from my province, why we didn't meet this uh, the, the, the deadline, as we have promised, they have promised last December, November to say, no, 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 we'll meet it. So I asked them, why you didn't do one, two, three? It's because they, uh, some of the magistrates didn't agree. They said, I, I forgot that act. They didn't have it, uh, the, 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 the request that they were having. So they promised me that they will definitely, because I went as far as to the province. I'm from the province. That's why I'm breaking on the way. Uh, I met with the, the premier to say, you, uh, he need to assist. You see, he's gone now. Okay, okay. Am proceed, I audible? I okay, thank you. I proceed. Uh, I want to, uh, to uh, talk to the Premier, and the Premier uh, to, uh, promised me that they will work hand in hand because uh, social development alone can't make it. If there are some people who've got the authority, they must assist to say, uh, make a seat on one, two, three. So that's my comment, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mangaje. Uh, now, before we proceed to the department, there are a few remarks I want to make, which might be con strengthening a number of remarks made al already by honorable members. I think the the big issue that is coming out here, honorable minister, is that no one doesn't understand that there's limitation of resources. But there's a strong view that if logistically, a mere audit throughout the country that which organizations are coming to the fore, how do you make sure that you leverage uh, on that without duplication? It calls for a huge coordination. That's why when we meet next week with these other organizations, it should be very much exciting if the department can say, we have gone back to look at this coordination. We think these are the best way to work with these organizations. Because there could be areas where there are South Africans who are, like it is now, who are making donations. There's a need for a department at least to ensure that minimally they lead in coordination logistically and ensuring that there's audit of all those and they are all seen to be doing it within acceptable standard since they are being leveraged on. So this logistical imperative is becoming very, very critical, uh, ATG. We think it needs to be dealt with the issue. Again, it can go a long way, Minister, in dealing with the shortage of food, if it is properly coordinated, in my view. 
right? Again, the issue of, I, I raised this, but I'm repeating it now. The question of sitting with the justice people, that section, I don't know whether it's section 159 or section 59, where they can say, whilst you are sorting out documents, can you go ahead and so on? Is there no way at national level that this can be done so that it's a uniform, if, they, if within the law there are spaces for adjustment in helping us to manage this situation, that doesn't come from a particular town, but it's nationally coordinated, maybe with the Chief Justice. Can we not be able to look at that? Again, I want to repeat the issue that says to honorable members, COVID or no COVID, there are government departments that have got responsibility to make sure that a certain standards in society to protect life are adhered to. And I think COVID is not here to eliminate that. So as, we, as long as we work together with that understanding, I think there will be no problem going forward. The last issue is what Honorable Pilangulu said, which is very, very, I find it very attractive, by the way, which is a convention, by the way. She says, would you look at customizing food distribution? In other words, understanding the method and the culture of everything. In my time, when, I was, when we were with my mother, uh, being the only one looking after us, we used to have 12,5 millimeter, 12,5 flour, 12,5 salt, 12,5 sugar. You would not believe that used to keep us for the whole month. How it was done, I don't know. I'm just using an example of customization. If the department can speak to that. Honorable Minister and your team. Uh, Chairperson, can I ask the department, I will, I'll come at the end. I, I thought I saw the DM's hand was up at some point. I don't know whether okay. she's still going to speak, but let the department respond and then the DM and then I'll come at the end. Okay. Okay. D D DG, I, I wasn't sure how you wanted us no, the department must answer the questions and the and the, the ADG must just give the relevant people an opportunity to respond to their own questions with regard to the areas of the of, of the work if if it's properly listed. Can you can you do that, DG, so that people can No, thank you very much, Minister. And uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. DJ and uh, we appreciate the the, the DJ can you start up fresh we could, um, we could, we could hear challenges. Uh, yes, DJ, we, can. we can't hear you can can your infrastructure be sorted out Th thank you very much chairperson i'm not sure if you can hear me now a little bit yes okay uh, <laughs> We are trying our utmost best uh, to ensure that uh, it's some difficulties in that we were lost for a few minutes. So when uh, Honorable Mangania was speaking and Honorable Bilankulu, we missed a few elements there. Uh, but I'm sure that some of the colleagues who were in the meeting would be able to assist us. Chair, I would, I'll deal with just a few questions and try and group some of them where I can. Linton, and then I will Linton. ask my colleagues. Linton. Hello, Linton. Linton. Chairperson, through you. Minister. Yes. Yeah, I was saying uh, ADG must must enable the others to to respond to questions that went directly to them, and then he will come in after that. Um, and the DM I think had her hand up, and then I will close. But right now, if uh, the ADG can please allow the others like your um, Sasa and others to 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 respond to the questions that were directed to them. Thanks, Minister. Let's start with Sasa, if the CEO. Okay. Uh, Connie Sasa. to respond on issues relating to foster care, and Peter to respond to some issues related to food distribution. Uh, th thank you very much, Chair, uh, Minister, Deputy Minister, Honourable Members. I will take uh, the questions that relate to Sasa, and Diane will 
then add on in some of on some of the operational detail. The issue of the opening of 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 offices, uh, there's office. All our offices have been opened. The challenge we have is just the number of people that are enabled and allowed to serve as a result of the the requirements that we allow only a third of the people to to come back. We've had a number of engagements just to see as to how can we work around this process to make sure that much as we still uh, recognize uh, the, the requirements in terms of a third of the people coming to the offices, that we also make sure that the service also happens. We've had challenges because over and above the fact that there's, there's laws that guide this, we've had to engage with the unions in terms of making sure that we can get support. The key challenge that we have is the fact that the numbers are huge and the queues are long. And in some instances, like in Kailicha, we find instances where people actually don't leave the office, they sleep in offices, which is creating quite a huge risk in terms of their health, but also in terms of just the, being there to, to sleep over the offices. The challenge we're having is that we've We've implemented new systems so that we can ensure that we get to everybody, whereby we actually are issuing people a card uh, system so that we can ensure that the people can come the next day uh, if they we know that they're in the queue. Because some of the branches are small and you find that in some instances you can serve only 50 people and not more. But now the challenge we've been experiencing is whereby if the people are sit outside that number where they not going to leave would rather sleep in the office we've implemented a system whereby we give uh, uh, um, uh, numbers to people for over a period and not just until the next day so that again we can avoid uh, the issue of people sleeping in the queue we've had to engage uh, with the community for example in kailicha because in instances where the community then actually brings a uh, soup kitchens in that environment it just complicates the work in terms of us working together to make sure that we have a proper system. The other challenge that is creating this is that most of the municipal offices are actually closed and they have not been uh, open. Some of the services that we provide as SASA, we provide in municipal offices, which therefore means that it, it makes the service uh, even um, less than what it was before over and above the fact that there's people that have had to wait uh, for six weeks. We continue to engage uh, with uh, municipal offices. In many of the provinces, um, uh, some of the offices have been opened. We've continued to have a challenge with regards to Western Cape, whereby uh, they were closed even before, but we continue to engage to see as to whether we can find a way, a way around uh, getting access to the municipal offices so that we can provide that service. We are continuing to engage uh, the, the, the unions. We believe that uh, through the minister, uh, in terms of us getting to a different level, it may be a bit easier because we also don't want to be seen to be breaking the law, yet at the same time, we need to provide a service. On, on the PP, PPEs, these have been provided. We've identified areas where we need to provide even more support, whereby we need to make, where we know that the, the the virus is is the attack potential of the virus is huge we are now looking at providing other services like uh, making sure that people have got the overalls uh, the ones that are, are worn and actually uh, uh, gotten rid of so that's a new uh, area that we're looking at in terms of providing those additional ppes on the issue of the the disability grants uh, that uh, the, the member referred to in terms of how are we ensuring that the people that were receiving a disability grant, a, a temporary disability grant, lapsed? How then do they get to know uh, that they, they are, their grant will continue until October? The unfortunate situation that we have is the fact that uh, the post office mail system is not working. So what we've been doing is We've been communicating this through the, the, the radio stations, through SABC, but also ensuring that we put it in, in, your, in your different platforms because it's the only way we could actually communicate, but also making sure that 
the people in, in the different communities, the chiefs, uh, we've written to them to also make sure that they are able to communicate so that people know that they don't have to actually come to to our offices. So that was the best uh, endeavor that we had to look at uh, because of the, the lack of uh, 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 availability of the post office in terms of delivering a mail. The other big issue that was raised was the issue of when are we going to pay uh, the, 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 the issue of the, the, the 350. We did a test last week just to see as to whether the system is working and that we'll be able to pay as effectively as we intend to. It's very important to indicate that we actually have had to go go first and get the different databases so that we can run people through the system to make sure that we don't have uh, inclusion errors. Uh, and and when we're audited, we found we we are found that we've given uh, the 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 COVID uh, a grant to people that may not necessarily have qualified. We found it interesting that uh, many of the people that actually didn't qualify actually applied. Uh, in terms of the system, the, the question that was asked is, do people get a response in terms of whether they qualify or not? We always have to go through the system because before we can advise that. But in terms of all the platforms that we currently have, people do get a, 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 a what you call a, a reference number when they go through a, a WhatsApp. And on the USSD, the reference number comes, but it closes too quickly. And we, we believe that people are not able to get that reference. But now we've actually updated even our, our call center so that when people call, they can be able to get support. In terms of the call center, we've been uh, offered support uh, by one of the IT companies for them to be able to give us support for free, whereby we can have a 24 hour service call center so that uh, the call center can then be able to respond to people in terms of whether their, their, their uh, application has been approved or not. It will only be in place uh, over the, the, the next uh, uh, two weeks. On the issue of how do we pay, when we start paying, we have now a number of people that we've sent through to the last leg of the validation, which is through SARS, and we've sent through 11,000 applications that we believe uh, qualify, and we're hoping that we should be able to pay those people uh, this week uh, so that we can ensure that as we get the numbers, uh, we do the, the data cleanup, we actually do the payment. We've also sent ad additional numbers, which come to about 200,000 that we've sent through. So we're going to be sending the information to SARS in batches. And on the payment process, as soon as the people have been approved, we pay. We're not going to use the system that we use where we pay on a particular date. We'll be paying weekly initially, uh, once a week, but as the system goes through, we're going to be paying every other day to make sure that we actually push through the numbers. So the, day, the, the, the payment date will not be only once, but once we've paid you this month on the 5th, for example, the following month will do exactly the same. So that's the high level feedback that I can, uh, I can give. Diane, I don't know if there's any additions you want to make. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I can just make one addition, please. Um, if, if I can just, uh, the, the one question was asked about if people have applied in um, May, but we only approve it in June, will they get paid for both months? And the confirmation is yes. The directions are very clear that the um, payment is from the month in which the person applied. So if there's a delay, and particularly with this first group, if there's a delay in approving the application, then they will in fact get paid from the month in which they applied. So they will get paid twice in June. Um, just, to, just to add that, thank you, Chair. Any other person, did you? Thank you, Chair. I think we we, we are covered on the SASA related matters. Um, I, I I think the 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 other important thing, uh, maybe let me allow Connie to speak first on foster care. Connie, don't. Thank you, Honourable Chairperson. Honourable Chair, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, 
I will deal with foster care related um, uh, questions. The first one was whether we're having meetings with justice. I just want to uh, indicate that we do have governance structures that we use to resolve foster care issues. At a national level, we have what we call National Foster Care Intersectoral Steering Committee. In this committee sits the judiciary, the Department of Justice, Home Affairs, SASA, and DSD. We meet quarterly. The last meeting we had was February, and now we're going to meet on the 29th of May virtually to address some of the challenges that we experience. Members will note that even if when we had these meetings, we meet with representatives. When they go back, they must give feedback to their constituencies or their members. So you find a challenge where some of them are not comfortable. For instance, if I can give example to implement section 159, more especially the judiciary. Now at a provincial level, you have what we call case flow management meetings. Um, and then also fed to by the lower structure, which we call task team meetings that track progress of foster care. Some of these meetings at the provincial level have not been meeting uh, since the lockdown. So we, we also encouraging them to say, as much as we meet at national level, work happens at a provincial and local level. So they also need to ensure that even if there's no physical meeting, there must be virtual meetings to address and unblock some of the challenges that uh, we are experiencing. The second question was around ECD, uh, to say um, what's happening in level three. Just to reiterate that uh, ECD remains closed at level three as we implement the risk-adjusted approach. And with this alert level, the proposal is that uh, level, um, ECD remains closed. However, we are working with the sector itself to ensure that we have a criteria and a risk assessment on how to phase in the opening of ECD centers in level one. The current proposal is level one. There may be discussions that will propose level two, but in terms of the risk adjusted approach that we have submitted to the NCCC, ECDs will open at level one with all the measures that we will set out or we have set out to be met by all ECDs. The area of social workers, there was also a question there to say, are the provinces ready? Uh, do we have supervisors or social work managers? Do we have tools of trade? The answer is, in terms of the consultation, the 1809 was consulted with provinces. The numbers came from provinces. But I must say, we still have a challenge of supervision uh, because even with the current pool of social workers, the ratio is supposed to be one is to eight, but it's almost doubled or in some cases tripled in terms of one supervisor per number of social workers. So what we said should happen here because we had to debate and agree to say, do we need extra capacity or not? We all agreed we need extra capacity and there's no way we can get supervisors in this space to be appointed. So we said we will uh, use creative ways of group supervision so that these social workers can zoom in and do COVID-19 related work uh, while they are supervised through group supervision because one-on-one -on -one will not work with the current pool. The issue of tools of trade, yes, there is no way they can work without tools of trade. Uh, provinces will have to ensure they promise that they will provide them with tools of trade using existing tools that are there and also that they will use because remember there are other units or sectors in the department that are using the 30 percent um you know um work uh, shift because social workers will have to come back all of them they are not going to use the 30 percent so they will have to see how the cars are going to be shared for community development practitioners and other uh, units to do the work of COVID. Yes, we will ensure that in the next presentation, we demonstrate the monitoring tool that we have already implemented in provinces. I think that is the last one. Thank you, Honorable Chair. I think the issue of the submission of a report, the legal colleague will deal with that um, because I understand he has joined. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Just before you come in, Digi, 
There's a question which I think I've got an answer, but I'm very careful. There's a question, Sasa, of five people, more than one people in one family and 350. You didn't respond to that. I think I have an answer, but let it be answered by the, the, the people who are executing the work. Uh, I will I will ask Brenda from a policy perspective to re respond uh, to to that issue, Chair. Oh, you don't want to answer. <laughs> okay. Hey, DJ, DJ, proceed. Who else is coming in? DJ, we can't hear you. Yes, Jefferson. Thank you, Chair. I thought. Uh... Uh, let me ask Bale to come in while Brenda is making her way in. Thank you, Chair. Just to respond on issues relating to, to food. Uh, Chairperson, um, uh, Honorable Members, Minister, DM, and colleagues, um, I think the issue of food, uh, we, 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 there are many questions that have been asked, but I think I will try to sum up my response directly in terms of what we, we are doing. And we also acknowledge the challenges that has been raised, uh, which is the truth, and we need to see how we, we work around them to improve our approach as government in terms of how we're dealing with the issue of food. Um, this issue of the food, we are distributing food on a daily basis. As we stand on the 19th, we are already at seven, 720,000 uh, food parcels distributed, uh, um, uh, which is the number of household. And this food uh, is this feed depending on the number of the household members. In rural areas, the average number of household are four, but in the informal settlements, the number goes up to seven, which means that already by now, if you look at the Gauteng report, we are already over 3.7 uh, people that has been fed. Um, the number that I'm quoting include solidarity with them, and the NGOs that they use send us data that we, we are reporting as part of them. But not, not all the NGOs, I mean those that are working with the Solidarity Fund. We, the food parcels that we have and we are distributing currently, they, they are customized. It's not, it's not one size fits all. If you look at the ones that comes from the rural areas, they give them 12.5. Like the, the like the chairperson's uh, food pass food, uh, food at home, they give the milli meal in the rural area they get 12.5, but in the metropolitan areas and metros they give them 10 10. And also, when you go to the west, they don't get milli meal, they get the things that they eat. So it's a little bit customized in terms of the need, but we 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 in terms of the coordination. We had what the members have been saying. One of the reasons why we we, we wanted to publish the, we developed the direction, was for the sake that we need with all stakeholders that are interested in donating the food, providing food, together we have to do it. And um, the direction provide us that we sit, we look at, if you are providing this, we will provide this. If you're providing there, we will provide this, this, this area. That is the main purpose of what we are supposed to deal with. And remember, honorable member, this food is not that, it's, it's an it's, it's a issue that we need to keep on working to better the logistics part of it and ensuring that we cover everyone. The reason being, what, what we distributed on the 1st of April we need to repeat now because it's finished. And if there are many people in the household than four, that means already within three weeks they are fit, they are gone. We need to go back. So we have got a serious challenge of the demand that in when you look at it, the demand exceeds the resources that we have. And I think Minister touched on that issue. 
The, the other issue is that, um, uh, which we, we, we use, we know statistically in terms of where are the hotspots. For example, in Gauteng, we know the Alexander, the Deep Sluot. Those are the hotspots where there's a lot of people, uh, which is above the norm of one household having seven people. So we statistics has shown us that. But on top of that, we still have a lot of people that has... Uh, has got a problem in terms of food, which we need to assist. Uh, so as we distribute with some challenges that we have, we need to better the system so that whatever we do is, 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 um, is something that we must be proud of. We acknowledge that I think the strategy in terms of what we need to come up with, we have got a plan, but I think we will need a strategy which has got a strong monitoring strong coordination or working together uh, uh, that will ensure Peter, that everyone Peter, of us. Peter, yes. you say we've got a plan, but it's we, don't, we, don't, we don't know it. You must proceed. Okay. Th th thanks very much, Chairperson. Um, the other issue which is very important is that um, there's a need for a very strong monitoring uh, in terms of that. For the whole month, especially uh, of distribution of food, we have created a nice database, which is continuous. But I think we can use that database and be able to tell everyone who are the needy people that we have currently using the same database. Because we must go back to the family that we distributed on the 1st of April, uh, uh, towards the 15th of May, and go back and distribute the same. But I think it's something that we need to work on. And, um, and uh, the last question is that we are busy looking at uh, the minister requested that we need to do the ensuring that for the next three months, how much will we need to distribute food to continue to feed the nation? And it's a policy decision that we need to make and ensure that we come up with that. And I think the portfolio committee will be given that information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, I, I will ask uh, the CEO to quickly respond to the question raised earlier. CEO, can you please quickly respond? Yes, I will. Uh, Chair, the, the question of uh, how many people qualify the intention may be looking at a homestead, but it's not practical uh, in terms of the process that we're going to use. So when people apply, we don't have a choice but to make sure that all those people that have applied actually benefit That's because good. we don't have a way of, of monitoring that. Thank you, Chair. Okay. No, no, no. That, 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 okay. that was a answer. That government has said, all those people who are not getting an income, who are unemployed. Now, it will be difficult to say who is unemployed on whose behalf when you deal with adults. I think your answer to me suffices. Uh, did you? Anything, any, anyone still coming? Before DM and Minister? ADG, ADG, can you unmute? Thank you, Honorable Chair. So there, there are probably about just three or four. <laughs> yes, I'm unmuted, uh, Chairperson. There are a few questions, yeah. a few issues I want to quickly deal with, Chairperson. The first issue, as it um, relates to 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 to, to Sasa. I want to just highlight and perhaps underscore maybe, some of the issues that they, they... Maybe before you proceed, I, can you hear me? Can you yeah, hear me? I can, Chair, but we are really struggling with the network. Yeah, no, let me, if you can hear me, I just want to make this general statement. I think over time, as we interact with the department, from managers, we want to hear more on what has been done and what practically is going to be done 
at times I'm very much uh, cynical about when managers come and say, we well, think about this, we think this must be answered, we think uh, maybe these are some of the things we're supposed to do. The purpose of the portfolio committee is an assumption, it presupposes that you guys are at work, you are implementing these things. You are here to give us report, challenges, and the practical intentions of how you are going to deal with them. Let's, let's just try to, to do it that way. There's a lot of good work done, but sometimes speaking in gray areas at some times will not help, especially on coordination. When we come next week, we want you to say, in terms of coordination, these are the concrete problems. In, terms, in terms of what we're going to do, these are the concrete plans. So that I don't want to hear managers saying, uh, these are some of the questions we will answer. These are some of the things we, we think. There are a lot of questions. Uh, for instance, let me give you an example. By now, at least from the bureaucratic point of view, managers are supposed to say, their states are telling them that so many households need food, which mm -hmm. translates in so many people. The capacity at our disposal we're going to give so much to close in practical terms, we are able to come and do contemplation. There's a lot of good work. We can't hear you. Okay, DJ, come in. <laughs> Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, we have a serious challenge with network. Um, but Chairperson, thank you for those comments. I think um, they are fair comments and they are proper comments. Um, and we will we, we, we will ensure, and some of the things I'll speak to will perhaps give a bit of a sense that there has been work underway um, and that we'll be able to report. Let me just say two things on Sasa. The first one is that we appreciate and we're very much aware that there is um, a, a need to pay as quickly as possible. And we've started uh, uh, to, 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 the, to, to the special COVID grants. It's expressed that we really needed uh, to rely on other stakeholders for data to validate against the data that we receive from applicants. We needed to ensure that we reduce Jefferson, I'm, I'm not sure if you can hear me. We are struggling to hear you, AGG. Thank you. Sorry, it was showing on my screen that I was offline. So I just wanted to express that uh, we really needed to, to rely on a number of, 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 of stakeholders to ensure that we are able to validate the data that we receive from our stakeholders, from, our, from the applicants. And this is to ensure that we reduce the margin of error and, of course, avoid um, leakage in the first case. It's very important so that those who are not deserving don't get the grant. And if, if, if you go by the suggestion, the, the, the input I made at the beginning of the meeting, that from the 75,000 that we would have paid, decided to run the data against SARS data, um, and the data set that came out of that was saying that 39,000 of those actually should not be getting grants. So we saved around 13.6 million rand um, in doing that. So I just wanted to express, we are in the process of 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 of, um, of sifting through and processing the applications, um, and, and we will pay recipients. In May, recipients will certainly get uh, the money that is, um, uh, or rather successful uh, applicants will receive their money. The other thing on SASA I want to state, which also links to some of the work of the department, is around the fact that we actually do need to upscale our communication. And I think the, the CEO spoke a little bit to that extent that we are working with other stakeholders, religious leaders, traditional leaders, uh, and community leaders, and, in, and as well as NGOs to try and highlight some of the the, 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 um, the work that we are doing or the services that we are offering. I know the, the MECs are also hard at work uh, through various digital platforms uh, and print media. Um, um, but the important thing I want to state here is that we've suggested, and, and I think this is already being done, but when we provide our food parcels, we must ensure 
that we are providing information on COVID. So recipients of the food packs also have information on COVID so that they're aware. This is an innovative sort of awareness uh, um, a campaign that we're embarking. Chair, chairperson, two more issues. Uh, the issue that relates to, to food that Peter was speaking to earlier, I want to say that we've received an update a few minutes ago that the numbers have shot up. We are at 720,000 now, which is almost 2.9 million people uh, that we are feeding. But also to highlight that the context behind what we are trying to do um, uh, with, um, with, with food parcels um, is really around trying to coordinate um, the manner in which we provide food parcels, not just us, but also NGOs. Um, and this is going to help us, Chairperson, um, with the element that you spoke to around developing some sort of an audit um, around that. And so it assists us in terms of data collection. It's imperative, Chairperson, that municipalities and provinces know how many people are vulnerable in their communities. So when we do this and when we say uh, it's important that we have um, the names and contact details of the people perhaps that are receiving food parcels. It's merely to ensure that we have a proper data collection that will assist us in terms of future planning as well. And we your time. This is also stronger. helps us. Oh, oh my time. Your Sorry, time Chair. Maybe well. just the, maybe just the last thing, Chairperson. We are. Um, I want to say we have submitted the report uh, on foster care. To, to the state attorney. And I've asked the team to follow up on that to ensure that everything was in place. So um, I just wanted to respond to that. I'll, I will pause here, Chair, because Thank of time. Uh, Honorable Minister and DM, ideally, the department was supposed to be finished in responding by quarter past two because there's item that we are coming to have which must be finished before three o'clock after this so i want to speak to dm and minister as they respond they must take that into that into account dm no thank you very much chairperson i'll stand down for the minister minister Thank you very much, Chairperson, and thank you to uh, all members. I want to start, uh, unfortunately, on a sad note um, from our side as a department that we lost a very young and dynamic woman who was in the community development uh, unit by the name of Ritabile Chobogwane. Um, yeah. I I just got the news um, earlier in the day about her, but I was told that it is not a COVID-related uh, death, uh, but I'm, I'm still to, to be informed about that um, uh, by the department. But it really is a pity for us um, uh, to lose young people who we believe, and she was quite dynamic and uh, uh, very committed to, to her work. I think the first thing that I would like to, um, to, to say is to thank the members for their contribution, thank the members for their questions and inputs, because I continue to say in Jefferson that uh, working together, we, we can be able to take our, um, our country forward uh, overall, COVID or no COVID, in my view. I've always said this from the very beginning when we started, that I continue to appreciate um, the oversight role that has to be done by members uh, across the, the political parties. And that um, because also now we are facing the scourge and, uh, of COVID, I think a greater collaboration for us at this point in time is very important. And also the collaboration must also be based on what mechanisms do we use for that collaboration and, and consultation. I think everyone will realize that the president has been leading in terms of consultation. Not only has he consulted widely, uh, he's even made sure that he continues to consult, to consult with the leaders of the different political parties because we believe that's the only way we can be able to, um, uh, to deal with this, uh, this virus. I think what I would also like to say is, as a department, Chairperson, I, I fully agree with you when you are saying you don't want uh, uh, officials to come to the 
committee and just be telling you about plans and all that you want the the officials to come here and tell you about what are we planning to do how are we going to do it when are we going to do it how much is it going to cost but more importantly as you've always said what is the impact of what we are doing and in specifically now that we are going through uh, this time of covid we have to come back to the committee and say the first quarter of 2020-2021, we have not been able to do a lot of the programs that we had planned to do because everything has been disrupted. We didn't know that, we didn't think we'll be in this space. But here is what we know. We know what COVID is. We know how it uh, moves from one person to the other. We know the figures. We know the hotspots. We know it now way better than we knew it at uh, beginning of the year. And therefore, we have to come back to you to give you very concrete plans so that when you do your oversight, which is constrained, by the way, your oversight is constrained now than it was before. Mm -hmm. But And the only way you can be able to do it better is by us feeding you the information because you are not able to be going in and out of communities as you freely used to do in the past. So you will rely on what um, we are saying to you. Um, I also want Chairperson to say, uh, I believe, and I'm saying to the department, remember when I spoke at the beginning, I said hotspots and all those things, that data we must get so that we can respond as far as the food and security issue is concerned, we must respond to that. And I'm saying we want to be ahead of the curve at all times. And if we want to be ahead of the curve, it means we must use empirical data, which is very much available. You know, when I sit in the net joints and I sit in the NCCC, I'm just amazed at how the capacity of South Africa across the board, not just government, how data, how much data we have. And I'm pained by the fact that with all the data that we had, we, have, we, we, we ended up being pushed by COVID uh, to be able to uh, implement things which we should have been implemented a long time ago. And so I think if we lose this opportunity, then I don't know. This is the best time and opportunity for us uh, to deal with the issue. So. Uh, I just want to say that prominent among the issues that the department and NDA will need to address in the near to the distance is to, to the need to re-strategize and reprioritize our program and resources of social development sector around the novel coronavirus uh, pandemic. So that's what we have to come back to you with. To this extent, under the leadership of the, the, the department, the sector needs to demonstrate what it has learned from the pandemic because this, this is a, a lesson that we will never forget, none of us will forget. And history will judge us if we don't learn here and begin to push things. The COVID pandemic has exposed limitations of our nutrition distribution mechanism in its current design. On the backdrop of our experience with nutrition distribution, it is evident to me that there's a need for a truly radical rethink on how our people access nutrition. That is, for me, is important. This cannot be done without government-wide cooperation and whole of society collaboration. As 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 we govern, we have been as government, we've been saying that the beginning of the state of from the beginning of the state of disaster, no one must be left behind. No one must go hungry. That's what the president has been saying uh, all along. Our people's challenge will be resolved through solution co-creation co at all levels, national government, district. And I want us to really zoom into the district development because when we talk about the food and the distribution of the food, we can't sit at national and think we know what is happening it, at each and every district on a daily basis. So we need to connect to the people at that level to be able for us to make sure that we're doing things uh, uh, properly. We continue to learn a lot as we evolve into the future. One of the things we need to consider and seriously reconfigure is to bring dignity to our people in, at all services. For instance, what you've been speaking about, the endless queues. We have to start using technology to help us. I don't believe that our people do not understand. 
Pardon? You've got less than, you've got less than three minutes, Minister. I'm finishing. I'm finishing, Chair. Okay. I'm saying right. that we must use technology in order for us to be assisted. You know, this morning, for instance, as I was looking, trying to look for different solutions, especially with this thing of the coordination of the food, I came across a list of other people who've been doing a whole lot of good work around food distribution. I came across something called Food Forward. They're not the only ones. But when I looked at what they do, how they go out and get the food which would have been thrown away and all that, and they package it, and they have a distribution network, I think it's time we just woke up to the reality that we have a capacity and a capability. And as South Africans, we can be able to get this going, but do it differently from the way they were doing, but mainly give our people dignity and give our people an opportunity to do things for themselves. I will repeat this. I have said, if COVID, food has come from all corners, let us coordinate that food so that it reaches everybody, but let's also make sure that we use this time to empower our community so that in the future they can be able to do things for themselves. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. As always, let us appreciate the cooperation within the department and the portfolio committee, but I just want to repeat something. Next week, ADG, let's be different. Three things that I want to say. If we say there is a problem as a department, let's be concrete what nature of that problem is. If we say there's a plan, let's be concrete what that plan is. If we say we've done work, let's be concrete in terms of the information we deliver to the committee. I think the minister has said that. In other words, we don't want you to hear, sir. you know, we're in Soweto, some of the things we're meeting, we think we're going to do something. No, no, no. We, we can't be working like that. I think the minister has said it very clear now. That next week, it's a problem. Concretely share it with us. There's a plan. Concretely share it with us. There's work done. Concretely say, show us how much that work is done. If we interact that way, we're able to do our oversight in a more effective way. I think the minister has assisted in that. Minister Spulel, Spong. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, members. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, ADG, thank you very much. Chairperson? Yes. Chair, I'm not sure if it would be possible. May I say something? Yeah. Um, it's Honourable Superzia, Chair. What does she want to say? Um, I just want to say, um, Chair, that um, I'm just afraid that um, when we talk coordination, the department may just hear regulation and further regulatory, a regulatory environment is going to further distance the department from social from social society. Um, the department... Second. Yes, sir. Yes, second. sir. If I, I remember, I have repeated the word coordination. Yes, sir. This is what we expect to see when we speak with the NGOs next week. Can we leave okay. it for next week? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Minister. Uh, Ms. Tabo. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye, Minister. Thank you, Chief. You can stay with us. You don't mind. Uh, Honorable uh, Ms. Tabo, what is left <laughs> now? Uh, I uh, can't stay with you, Chair. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, the, the last item is... Uh, Adoption of the AAPP and the strategic plan by the, the report. The report reflects our discussions, and uh, it's here now, honorable members, for adoption. It's table, it was circulated. Do members have comments? Um. You want to say something, Lenny? Uh, yes, yes, Chairperson. Um, I was going to re maybe request the compiler of the report, the approach, and then and maybe flag the recommendation and observations, which is Yoli. Yolisa is the, oh, is the my draft that is. Yes. Thank my you, Chairperson. You know, Thanks. the thing is, uh, when you've read the report, you get to, you get carried away. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Uh, Ms. Yoli. We can see you. Can I be heard? 
Yes, we can hear and see you. Okay, Chairperson, thank you. And good afternoon to members. It's been a while since we saw each other. Um, Chairperson, I, the report is quite um, big. I think it's about 40 pages or so. And in the interest of time, I may advise with your permission, Chair, that as we always do, we look at the most important thing, which are the observations that um, based on what the members raised during those, those meetings, because those, recommend, those observations are lead to or feed to the recommendations. So what I always do is, as members are talking, I listen for, for the key strategic points, because some of the discussions are just for clarity, but others are, I make a judgment that now these ones are more of a strategic nature. And those are the ones that I pick up and then I formulate recommendations on those um, observations. Okay, Chair, uh, Cicelindy, are you able to fly it? So what I did is from the report, I just took the sections that deal with the deliberations and then the recommendations. Can I? Sorry, uh, sorry, Oli. Honorable members, are we still together? Um, we are yes, Chair. Oh, I'm here. Yeah, no, I yes, Chair. I, I just want to make a proposal. From the assumption that the report has been circulated and looking at the time at our disposal, assuming that members have read the observations, can members simply speak to those observations and recommendations if there's any need to amend or add anything? And then so that we can be able to close the report, unless there are grammatical things or there's a whatever. If you want, there's a past tense instead of a present tense, or there's a, <coughs> there's a long sentence that requires comma if it's present. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we don't want to go to that extent. But I remember, can members, having read the report, look at the observations and recommendations and raise anything in the body of the report if you, if members so fit? What about members? <laughs> Do we have people who are ready to speak, Lindy? Can, uh, can, can we put the present? Can we? Can you remove the presentation? Can you remove it, please? Yes. Ah. Thank you. Okay. Do you have members who want to speak on this matter? Honorable members. That's just hold them. Eh? You can see them. Chair, mm -mm. can I make a comment briefly? No, no, no. Let's look. All right, April. Just first look at the list of the members who want to speak on the report. We start with you. We we put your name down. Any other members, honorable members? Or do members want presentation by the content advisor? Because we don't, my worry is that we don't have time. The report was circulated a long time ago. But I'm very mm -hmm. careful of railroading it if you've got a different view. Do you members feel comfortable? If she runs through the observations quickly, what do you want? My members, I'm pushing it to you now. Um, Chair, I, I, I would I would suggest, Chair, that um, that the um, content advisor, um, as per your suggestion, run through the recommendations. Okay. How, how many minutes, you only can you take to do that? Um, okay, okay, I'm just looking how many I have here. So I must just not cover the observations, just straight to the recommendations. Yes. Okay. How, how, if you if you just go to the recommendation, yes. Okay. Okay, chair. So what I've done is I have um, divided them in in terms of those that belong to the department, those that belong to SASA, and those that belong to NDA. 
So I will start with the department. I'm just going to read. The minister must ensure that the department submits its annual performance plans to the office of the Auditor General for a review within the prescribed or agreed deadline. This is this is this is in spirit of upholding good governance and effective planning, improvement of accountability and transparency. I'm going to the second one, Chair. Yes. The, minister, the minister must ensure that the department in its annual plans set clear targets aimed at addressing issues of gender-based violence and femicide and violence and murder of children. Next one. The minister must ensure that the department's senior management effectively use reports of the internal audit units. This will ensure that the department responds timely to any issues identified by these units. Any weaknesses to the internal controls or systems and non-compliance with legislation and policies can be ad addressed on time. The minister must ensure that the department in its anti-gangsterism anti-substance abuse campaigns have clear emphasis on family threatening interventions and youth skills development. The minister must ensure that the department within this financial year develops clear guidelines that would direct its collaboration with community-based organizations, non-government organizations, as well as corporate organizations in the distribution of food parcels or cooked meals. This will ensure better coordination and the strategy should be bottom up. So, Chairperson, on this one, you can advise whether I should still belong on this uh, report as we just uh, discussed those it in this meeting. Those recommendations are meant for what? TSG or SASA? Or is it These are for the department. These are okay. for the department, yes. Go to other recommendations. Okay, so those I'm done now with the department. I'm going to Sasa. Yeah. Okay, with Sasa, I have two chairperson. The minister must ensure that Sasa, during the 2020 2021 financial year, puts in place effective Q management systems, such as using Q Marshall system. In addition, Sasa must ensure that pay points have adequate ablution, ablution facilities, water supply, and seating arrangements to up uphold the dignity of beneficiaries. Mm. The minister should make sure that SASA, before end of May 2020, develops a clear communication strategy on the execution of the 350 social relief of distress, distress grant, as well as application processes that need to be followed. Mm. I'm going to the NTA. Yep. The minister must ensure that the NTA submits its annual performance plans to the Office of the Auditor General for a review within the prescribed or agreed deadline. This is in spirit of upholding good governance, effective planning, and improvement of accountability and transparency. This is similar to the DSD because of the AG's findings, Chair. It may sound very mm. familiar to the members. Uh, Chair, for NDA, I have this one, unless members want to add others that they feel that maybe I omitted. Thank you. Uh, honorable members, those are the recommendations informed by the strength and the nature of your inputs when the department presented last meeting. Honorable members, you may speak on TST recommendation, you may speak on SASA recommendation, you may speak on NDA. The members can choose which recommendations they want to speak on. Um, the in first what order? On my list is, the first on my list is Honorable Abrams. Do you have, do you have other hands, Lindy? Uh, Chairperson, the, not yet. Not yet. Honorable Abrams? Um, thank you, Chair. Chair, I'm actually covered. My my question was picked up in the observation section that the department and both entities are looking at the implications of COVID-19. So I'm covered under the observation section. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Abrams. Uh, what is Sorry. clear, Honorable I see there's Honorable Masango, Chair. 
Okay. Honorable Masango. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm also help, happy with the recommendations uh, for the same reason that uh, Honorable Abrams is happy because I see the issue that really irked me and um, uh, the, the content advisor even uh, uh, um, contacted me about it after the meeting last week and I, I see that it's covered in the recommendations and I'm very, very uh, appreciative of that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Lord Musango. Any other honorable members before we go for for adoption? Honorable Sukar, Member Sukar. Honorable Sukar Akbare. Yeah. Chairperson, can I get my Afrikaans, No. Careful, you have got a right, but you can put us in trouble, but you've got a right. <laughs> che, che, I, I, wish, I just wish to highlight what we have discussed over and over with Sasa, which has to do with the, um, the, the need for um, the scale up of operations um, which, uh, and the automation and the lack thereof in terms of the uh, congregating of people for Sasa grants. It came up again, um, I think, uh, somehow today, I'm not sure. Um, but I think that that part needs to come in because the department um, has made, I think, in the response to us, has um, also referred to plans to ensure that um, they will deal with that. But we need to make that part of the recommendations, Chair, especially since we have COVID for the next 18 months or, or two years. By the grace of God, we don't um, hope that. But, yeah. Oh. I'm done, Chair. Thank you. you but now, um, my proposal that are issues we discussed when the COVID report was, and we have made a particular requirement for next week so that there's clarity on those issues. Can we leave it under that? Come again, Chair. I didn't get you. I am saying the issues you are raising came out when we were discussing the COVID, the COVID update. And there are clear requirements we have thrown to the department for next week when we meet around that. Okay. Can we leave it there? Um, I'm of the, of the view, Chair, that it, it goes back to the capacity of the organization um, in terms of response, not just with COVID, but in terms of its services. No, no, we're, we're saying COVID is just a name. All the things we are raising with COVID is how the department is supposed to be run. So mm. the, what I'm saying is that it's a matter that is taken care of there, even if it deals with the capacity. Okay. I hope you just raise your next week check if this thing is not done. I'll, I'll, I'm putting my head on the line for it. Okay. Okay, Chair. Thanks, Honourable. Members, can I table the report for adoption? Chair? Uh, Chair? Honourable Masang? Yes, I would like to propose the adoption of the report, Chair. Any second, Uh That do, Chairperson, before we second. Mm. Hello? Who is calling Mutata? Gumangwe <laughs> Nyatat. Okay. Okay. Uh, it, okay. Okay. Right? Can it please be noted, my chair, honorable chairperson, but we are not adopting the report as the EFF. Okay. And go to that. You, what does that mean? It means we are not adopting. So you you are not supporting the adoption. Yes. Okay. Anyway. Do we have any seconder for adoption? Yes, Chair. Honorable Manganis uh, seconding. 
Yes. Any other comments? Honorable Masango proposed adoption. Honorable Manganye, second. The FF has expressed views on that. By, by look of things, it seems as if the committee in its strength says the report must be adopted. Am I okay? Yes. Thank you very much. It's true, yes. Chair. Yes. Um, any other item? Uh, I would like it. <laughs> Chair, I'm, I'm, Chair I'm, I'm so sorry uh, to take Hello. you back. Hello? Chair, I just wanted to, before the meeting closes, just to mention that I had asked a question about the report to the N, to the North Houting, uh, High Court, uh, and there was a mention that a legal person was going to answer the question, and I, oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I have not had a, a, oh, a response yeah. to that. Mm. Thanks, Chair. Mm. Yeah, no, I think that's an that's an that's a that's an oversight, because they said a legal person was coming in. Uh, Lindsay, can we make sure that we follow up next week on that matter? Uh, I definitely, I'll do it, Not 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 next week. They must give a written report yes. because they were supposed to give that answer here in the meeting. Can we do that? I will do it just thank after you, this meeting, Chair. So, okay, thank you very much. Uh, report adopted. Any other item, Lindwe? No, Chairperson, there are no items uh, uh, for, for any discussion now. That was our last item. Thank, thank you very much, Honourable Members. Can I thank you all of you for the manner you usually conducted yourself? I have seen no difference today. South Africa is on course. With the powers so vested in me up to this point, uh, can I declare the meeting closed? Thank you very much. Have fun. Thank you, Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lindy. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Yolita. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And thank Bye. you for your assistance, members. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. I'm still here. Okay. Uh, stop recording. <laughs> ah, sure. Sharon. Uh